Good morning, y'all, and welcome to Apron Strings. Well, we're well into November, and just a few weeks from Thanksgiving, so we're going to have a few dishes that's going to be on our Thanksgiving table. And today, I'm going to show y'all how I make a little casserole. It doesn't make a huge one, so if you got a big family, you might want to double or triple it. But it's a pineapple cheese casserole. That's a mixture of your pineapple and cheese with crackers mixed with butter on the top and baked. It's very tasty. So I want to get y'all on over here to the booze block, and I'm going to show you how we do it, and we'll get dish number one down for Thanksgiving. Okay, while y'all are surveying what goes in it, I'm going to run turn the June oven on and let it preheat on 350, and then I'll be right back over here, and we will mix it up. Okay, into my mixing bowl, I've got one 20-ounce can of uh -oh, crushed pineapple. that I drained and I saved my juice because I needed three tablespoons of it. So I'm going to add me a little bit more because I just spilled a little bit. Okay, I've got my pineapple and I'm going to add in one half cup of sugar. And, and my pineapple juice. I'll go ahead and put that in. Just want my sugar to kind of be dissolved. And I'm going to sprinkle in three tablespoons of flour. Now if you don't have any flour, you could use one tablespoon of cornstarch. But on something like this where it doesn't matter if it has that creamy, cloudy look, cornstarch is clear when it heats and thickens. And your um, flour is not. Okay, one cup of sharp cheddar cheese grated. Okay, now I'm going to set all of this aside because I need to finish. The recipe actually calls for Ritz crackers, and I didn't have any. And I've used the Waverly Waker wafers or club crackers, whichever ones that you buy, before, and they work just as well. So, I normally have Ritz crackers because that's my go-to snack, but I don't have any today. Instead of getting out the food processor, because they're so easy to crumble up, I just put them in my my bag here and use my good old rolling pin. Now I need a cup of those. Let me get a bowl to mix my crumbs and my butter together. We're going to bake this at about 350 for about 20 to 30 minutes. You want it the crackers kind of browned on the top. Okay, there's a cup. I'm going to put a little bit more. Some of them are pretty powdered. Okay, and I've melted one half of a stick, one fourth of a cup of butter. We're going to put that in with our crumbs here. And I'm just going to toss it around so they'll all be buttery. Y'all have some special dishes that you just have on holiday like Thanksgiving, Easter, Christmas, Mother's Day. If it's something that's not a whole lot of trouble and you want to share it, shoot me an email and I'll fix it between now and Thanksgiving on a video and tell them where I got it. I've got some good stuff coming up. It's, every family has their own uh, dishes that's unique to them and that they like. So, 
card away. Isn't this the coolest little pumpkin dish? I got this year before last at TJ Maxx and I just love it. Okay, I'm going to get my little mixture in here. I mean, there's not a lot to it. If you've got your pineapple and if you're like me, you usually always have cheese, you're, you're good to go. And if you like that Hawaiian pizza that has pineapple and ham on it, let me tell you, you can cut a little bit of ham up in here and it's delicious. Or bacon. But today, I'm going to do it just exactly like the recipe says. And I'm just going to sprinkle my crumbs around on the top. And because I have some left over in the refrigerator, I'm going to add a couple of rings of um, sliced pineapple. But don't open a can of pineapple just to do that. I just happen to have this over there, so I'm going to use it. Y'all see how easy that was? And you've got a neat little side dish that's different. So I'm going to get it in the oven. I've got the June oven heating at 350. And I'll bring y'all back when it's done and show you what it looks like. And I'll dish up a little bit of okay, it. Okay, the casserole is out of the oven. And see how the crackers have kind of browned? If I had had Ritz on there, of course they're brown, they would look a lot browner. And it smells yummy. It's real, real hot. And because of the sugar content in the pineapple, I'm going to let it cool a little bit before I um, dish it up and show y'all what it looks like. I hope y'all enjoyed watching me make this recipe, and I hope you'll add it to your recipe box. It's very good. That cheddar cheese with the pineapple just makes it wonderful. When I was growing up, Mama would take a lettuce leaf and put a either a peach half or a pineapple ring on it and uh, put a scoop of cottage cheese and sprinkle some cheddar cheese. I wouldn't have tasted of that for anything, but now I know it's delicious. So when you serve this, you can have some cottage cheese available to put on a little dollop on the top and a little bit more of your grated cheese and it's delicious like that. I've already been tasting of it. It's yummy. You've got the salty, little touch of salt in the crackers on the top. And you got the pineapple with the cheese in it. It's really tasty. It's a wonderful side. So Get your stuff together and add it to your Thanksgiving menu and have something a little bit different. Now, if you're going to feed a big family, you want to double or triple it because it, this little dish that it's in is probably six or seven inches across at the widest. And it's probably eight or nine inches long. So it doesn't make a huge uh, casserole. It's great for just a couple of, you know, or four people. But... Double it or triple it if you're going to feed a bunch, but it's good and it's worth the try. I hope y'all are getting you a little bit of stuff ahead for the holidays. My sister-in-law called me yesterday from Pensacola, and on their news station, they were telling people they better stock up, that the shelves were going to be empty, that we had some issues to deal with, that it wasn't going to get any better, and to get what they needed for their holiday meals. Well, that's what I've been telling y'all. So that came from a, a public news station in Pensacola, Florida. So y'all go ahead and buy as much as you can of what you're going to need to cook for Thanksgiving and Christmas just in case it's not on the shelf when you go to look for it. We want to keep some memories alive and well, even in turbulent times. We can have a safe haven with our family gathered close and feeding them a good meal and remembering other good times together. That'll make your bones fat. That's what my mama used to say. So, a word to the wise should be sufficient. Get you a little bit of step ahead on your shelves. I know we can't afford to go buy the store out. Not too many people have that kind of money. But you can have one less Coke or one less hamburger, much as hamburgers cost nowadays, and you can buy a little bit of extra staples for your cabinet, what they actually said was stock up on non-perishable items that you'll be able to use if the, when the shelves are empty. They didn't say if, they said when. 
and already there's some stuff that's being uh, bought out. Y'all remember, you've got a family to look out for. Take good care of them, provide for them, be wise. Step up to the plate and be the one that, you know, takes the responsibility and everybody will be a whole lot happier. Hope y'all are having a good fall, planning for a good Thanksgiving in a couple of weeks or so, and and uh, planning those sweet memories with your family. That's what I'm doing. I just I just love this time of the year. I've been so blessed, and I love to fix a big old meal and have my family close and enjoy the chit chat while we eat. I don't enjoy getting on the scales afterwards, but oh well. There's a little space between Thanksgiving and Christmas to get rid of Thanksgiving and get ready for Christmas. Y'all have a blessed week. Come back in a day or two and we'll do something else.